Hey guys, today we're going to look at discrete versus continuous relations. We're going to answer the question, how do I identify discrete and continuous relations? So let's start with discrete. Discrete data is disconnected data. The input variables are isolated, distinct, and individual. Another way I like to describe it is they can be counted. Every part of it can be counted. The data points have no partials, meaning that the numbers between the independent variables are not true or do not work. And then, like I said earlier, it's used for things being counted. So let's think about number of cookies, like if you're at a cookie shop and then the total cost. They're not gonna let you buy like 0.5 cookies or 1.2 cookies or three and a half cookies, none of that. They're gonna say you can buy one, two, three, or four cookies. So that is why it is discrete, it is disconnected, and we have no partials there, it's only the whole numbers. It can be decimals or partials, but it's only going to be specific ones. So not every point between one and two is going to work, only one and two will work. Okay, then continuous data is connected data. It can be drawn without lifting your pencil. And then the numbers between the two data points do have meaning because the partials are true. So if you think about a distance and time graph, like here we would go a little bit and then this is stopped and then we're going a little bit there. So something is happening the entire time between the start and the finish. I did not lift up my pen whenever I drew that graph. So it is connected and anything between zero and 60 would be true here. So something important to point out, this does not mean it goes on forever. Discrete data could go on forever. Continuous data could not go on forever. That's not what these words mean. They mean disconnected, or connected. We're not talking about going on forever. So let's look at this first one. We have a table that's talking about the number of drinks and the cost. So most of the time in tables, we are going to assume that tables are discrete. And the reason for that is we don't know that the partials between two and four are true. So usually tables are discrete. And then also if we just think about this situation, they're probably not gonna let you buy a partial number of drinks. They're not gonna let you buy like a third of a drink. They're gonna say you have to buy the whole thing. So no partials here. So that's why this one's discrete. All right, let's look at this next one. I have a disconnected graph. So this is definitely discrete because the data is disconnected. So anytime you have a graph that is disconnected like this, it's going to be discrete. Okay, next one. If I were to trace my pencil when drawing this graph, I would not be lifting up my pencil at all. This is connected. So this is a continuous graph. Because it is connected and you wouldn't lift your pencil when graphing. So continuous is where we do not lift up our pencil when graphing it, it's all connected. All right, let's look at this next one. So we have a pattern going on here, but my points are still disconnected. And that is what makes this one discrete. Just like the one above it, we have disconnected points.
and the disconnected points make it discrete. Okay, now we're gonna get into some word problems. So we have to think about what the graphs would look like and if this situation would have partials or not. So it says Claire is taking a road trip from Texas to Kentucky. She will travel between 12 and 14 hours at an average speed of 50 miles per hour. Is this continuous or discrete and why? So most of the time, whenever we are talking about traveling, driving in a car, that is going to be continuous. She's going to be continually driving. It's not like she's gonna drive one hour and then all of a sudden end up at hour two. That's gonna be a continual thing. She's gonna be traveling in between hour one and hour two. So this is continuous because it is a connected graph. and the partials are true. It's not like we're gonna be counting, oh, she travels one hour, then two hours. That's going to be, she's traveling in between one and two hours and then two to three hours. It's a continual thing. Okay, then number six says, Fred is reserving hotel rooms for $105 per night for his soccer team's tournament that is out of town. He will need 10 to 12 rooms. Is this continuous or discrete and why? So let's think about this. He needs between 10 and 12 rooms. Is that going to be 10 and then like 10.05 rooms and then 10.2 rooms? Or is it going to be 10, 11, or 12 rooms? It's going to be 10, 11, or 12. They're not going to let you order a partial room. So this is discrete because Fred cannot get a partial hotel room. He can only get 10, 11, or 12. Okay, number seven says a 30 gallon bathtub is draining at a rate of four gallons per minute, continuous or discrete, and why? So this would definitely be continuous because that's going to have a start and then it's gonna keep happening until it has a finish. That's going to be connected. You're not gonna start with 30 gallons and then all of a sudden end up at zero gallons. There's something happening in between those the entire time. So this is continuous because every partial between zero to 30 gallons would be valid. It's going to be that connected graph. Okay, then last one, Jasmine is picking watermelons at Fruity Farms. She is charged $4.25 for each watermelon. Continuous or discrete or why? This would definitely be discrete because I don't think Fruity Farms would want you buying one third or one fourth or two thirds of a watermelon. She's only gonna be able to buy whole watermelons. So this is discrete because Jasmine will only buy whole watermelons. Meaning no partials.